I've had this thought every so often, I look at the world and I wonder why didn't all plants agree on the perfect leaf shape for production, for the efficiency of photosynthesis, whatever it is, then they'd all have the same leaf shape, the best leaf shape, the perfect leaf shape. Well, look, these two plants, it couldn't be more different. That one's got some serious personality, but it'd be a pretty boring world. And they're all here for different things. Some grow short, some grow tall, some flower, some don't. They attract different bugs, the colors that they are, whatever it is, to pollinate. It, they each have their place in this world. Same for people. We all think differently, walk differently, do different things, have different interests, choose different paths in life. It'd be pretty boring if we didn't. We were all the same. What is MRKH? Briefly, it affects one in 5,000 females and it generally affects the structures of the uterus and the vagina. But there's way more, so let's dive in. Just in case you thought this was gonna be boring, here's my props. I'd like to thank our sponsor here. I'm kidding, we have no sponsors. We did not get sponsored by a kidney bean company. An eight week old embryo is the size of a kidney bean. This is when this development happens till the time it is a size of a red pepper. Okay, so from here to here, this is when this development is occurring. The malarian duct is the structure within the developing embryo, the fetus, that develops into the female reproductive system. So that includes the uterus, cervix, upper vagina canal, Notice it doesn't include the ovaries or the lower vagina canal. Check it. Here's my drawing from kidney bean to red pepper time of development. Genes turn on or off here, releasing hormones or not. And the malarian ducts come together, fuse with the urogenital sinus. They're in yellow. And this creates tension. And then it goes on to form the uterus and upper vagina canal, the malarian tissue, and the lower vagina canal. Malarian development is on a spectrum with typical textbook development at one end, and then MRKH would be at another end. And then there's many malarian variations in between those, some that would support pregnancies and some that wouldn't. You might get no uterus, or you might get pieces of uterus, or you might get a full uterus. Okay, I have changed outfits. Anything turquoise is going to represent anatomy of what you do have. Textbook female reproductive system would look somewhat like this. Maybe it's better from the back with no head. Just ignore my head. This t-shirt is the uterus, the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and the vagina canal. Whoop! Here's MRKH. Ovaries, fallopian tubes. Ovaries can be high up in the abdomen or low. Whoop! and a little bit of vagina opening at the bottom. Remember, the lower vagina is not part of the malarian duct and therefore develops with MRKH. Turquoise is what develops. So a little bit of vagina, we're still MRKH, and then there can be some fragments of uterus, still got the ovaries, and yet they might have uterine horns on them, so some uterus develops. So, so here's my attempt at drawing variations of MRKH. Ovaries, fallopian tubes, little dimple of vagina I've seen earlier. 
this just never happened, never fused, never formed the lower vagina and uterus. So, urogenital sinus, stay dimple. Moving on, they look a bit more like faces as we go along. So some malarian tissue development, maybe uterine horns, ovaries, fallopian tubes, maybe a little bit of a longer lower vagina. This one I just generally wanted to look like a happy face, so uterine red mint. For another example of developmental anomalies and what's developing at that same time, the kidneys are generally most often up here. Boop. Okay, for instance, with my version of MRKH, I've got one kidney. I don't know what shape it is, but it's not that and it's down here works perfectly fine it's just a little different they have to go looking for it okay so to finalize to put everything on the outside my mrkh i got just the half centimeter of or third of an inch, quarter of an inch of vagina, and then no uterus, and then one pelvic kidney. If we walked around, we could tell what's going on on the inside of people. This is what I would look like. We don't actually understand the genetic component with MRKH. Because MRKH can be that spectrum of little piece of uterus, no uterus, different lengths of vagina, one kidney, a pelvic kidney, a kidney up here, all these differences show that there's different genes involved. It's not just one simple, oh, that's the answer. That's why this, boom, boom. It's complicated, like everything, which is more fun. I also kept this shell picture in here for a reason when I go looking for shells on the beach. I generally don't pick up the ones that I go, oh, wow, this shell looks like every other shell I've ever seen. Wow. I generally look for the unique ones, the different ones, the ones that catch my eye. Anatomy Anomaly.